So this work was actually done at uh, Caltech while I was a postdoc. Right now I'm at IIT Bombay. So the work deals with how electron tunneling happens in what are called these Van der Waals heterostructures. Um, so I'll briefly explain. Uh, uh, so, so you must have heard of graphene quite a bit. Uh, so I'll introduce uh, you to this material called this hexagonal boronitride if you're not familiar with it. Uh, it has got a honeycomb lattice just like graphene, but now instead of having uh, two sub lattices occupied by carbon atoms, you have alternating boron and nitrogen atoms. And what this gives you is a very nice insulating uh, layered material, uh, which works pretty much like graphene for uh, in terms of your uh, experimental setup. So what uh, advantage this provides is in terms of uh, creating new heterostructures to study new phenomena. For example, if you want to study a bilayer system where two graphene layers are sandwiched between this insulating material, that offers a lot of interesting experimental avenues. For example, you can look at Lando levels uh, spectroscopy or for example, coolant drag measurements where how the electrons in one uh, layer affects the electrons in the other layer and so on. Uh, but the question is, uh, what happens in the tunneling regime when you have structures of this kind, when the boron nitride is very small? So it's important to understand tunneling for any other uh, uh, other applications with uh, structures of this kind. So some of the questions that we wanted to answer were, uh, uh, is boron nitride a good tunnel barrier? Do you have like uniform tunneling all across your uh, material? Uh, do, uh, do you have uh, effects coming in from imperfections? How is the repro reproducibility and so on? So the way we started working was we started with simple metal insulator metal junctions, uh, the insulator being boron nitride in this case, um, and then gradually replaced it with graphene, graphite, and you know eventually reached the structures. So first I'll go through the simple case of a metal insulator metal junction with uh, hexagonal boron nitride. So the circuit looks something like this. You have a wafer, uh, a silicon silicon dioxide wafer, and you have a metal electrode, and then a boron nitride on top of it, and another metal electrode and then you have some voltages uh, applied to it, okay? So the structure is shown here. The four lines that you see are the bottom gold pads. Then you have a boron nitride, which is like this uh, uh, region in the dotted lines. And then a top electrode uh, uh, from, from the top, uh, which forms like two junctions are shown here. It basically has these four junctions uh, with the four bottom electrodes, okay? So now if I look at this uh, tunnel characteristics, first thing that we see is that the tunneling IV, if you look at the IV, I don't have it here, but it's pretty much linear that you, you can extract the low bias conductance out of it. And what is seen as the conductance as a function of the number of layers of boron nitride uh, goes exponentially uh, down, which basically tells you that you have a very good tunnel barrier and your conductance depends on the, uh, on the distance between the two uh, metal electrodes. So it goes exponentially as a function of the thickness of the boron nitride. We also have area scaling, uh, which means that uh, the tunneling is uniform across the boron nitride barrier, okay? So what is interesting was that even when the thickness of the boron nitride was pretty large, where you should not expect tunneling, so it's like largely se separated metal electrodes now, in such cases, many times we do not have tunneling, as is seen in the previous plot, the conductance is very low. But at times we have situations where the current versus voltage curves showed something like this, where it is not linear, but it has got like step-like features. And if I take a derivative of that, that looks something like this. And these look like peaks now, and they're like kind of equally spaced uh, peaks that you have. So for people who are familiar with what are called as single electron transistors or Coulomb blockade, these IV characteristics look very much like a Coulomb blockade uh, device. Coulomb blockade is when you have a quantum dot sandwiched between two electrodes, and then uh, you, you kind of manipulate the current voltage using a gate and so on. But here I don't have a quantum dot. All I have is a metal, uh, two metal electrodes separated by an insulator. So the question is where does this come from? And what we think is happening uh, here is that you have defect mediated tunneling. So you can imagine that I have this kind of a barrier. Now I have defect states in between, uh, which are like intrinsic defects in the boron nitride crystal itself. Uh, so in graphene, it's, it's pretty much uh, not possible to find a defect. Graphene is a, usually a very clean system, but in boron nitride, you can have defects. So you end up with two different processes. First is direct tunneling, where the tunneling just happens between uh, this entire barrier, just like what you learn in quantum mechanics, all that uh, works fine. But you can also have an additional process, which is a defect assistive tunneling, where the tunneling happens via these defect states. So what you end up with is, when you have a very thin device, this, this dominates, and when this direct tunneling is kind of suppressed, when you do not have that uh, uh, tunneling happening, then this kind of starts to show up. So that's why when we made the boron nitride barrier quite thick, 
then the, the direct tunneling was very low and this defect assisted tunneling started to show up. Now a smoking gun proof for uh, what is called a Coulomb blockade effect is what, what are called as Coulomb diamonds. So this is like when you apply a gate voltage to this quantum dot that is sandwiched, uh, you can manipulate the potential of the dot and what you have is in a color plot with the, with the source drain bias and the gate voltage, you start seeing very nice diamond shaped patterns. So the idea is to apply a gate voltage uh, in this direction. So use the silicon as a gate and apply a gate voltage. Unfortunately, we can't really do that in this case because we have a metal here. So if I try to apply a gate voltage through this uh, region, then this metal is kind of going to screen away whatever potential I apply. So we could not really find Coulomb diamonds in this case. So this is this remains a speculation that okay, maybe I have defect states and that affects my thing. So then we moved on to metal graphene boron nitride junctions where we replaced one of the metal electrodes with graphene. Okay. So in this case, what we find is the current voltage characteristics does not look like really linear. It has got a feature in it. So this is a single layer graphene on a boron nitride substrate. So boron nitride can also be used as a substrate instead of silicon oxide. So we had a boron nitride and it gives to like better quality devices. So it's often used and the metal is again chrome gold. So it's illustrative to look at DIDV instead of um, IV. So DIDV is uh, basically just the conductance you can imagine it to be. So what we find is you have kind of a suppressed tunneling at low biases and all of a sudden this tunneling starts to increase. So you have like a bucket like profile in your uh, uh, DIDV characteristics. So the question is where is this coming from? This was not there when I had a metal. I put in a graphene layer so I see this. So is it coming from the metal or is it something to do with my external uh, scenario? So what we did was we changed the type of metal, the type of substrate and the type of uh, graphene that we used. So here you have single layer graphene on boron nitride with chrome gold, bilayer graphene on silicon oxide substrate with a metal silver and you find pretty much there are small deviations in the characteristics but that bucket like feature still remains. So this is another one where we had graphite on silicon oxide but with chrome gold, again that feature remained. We could also apply a gate voltage to the graphene layer. So that basically changes the density of the graphene layer. Again, you can see that these are offset. So again, you can see that the DIDV has this nice bucket like shape for all the gate voltages that is done. So we have a very soft gap uh, where the tunneling is suppressed at low biases, uh, which is independent of metal substrate and the density of carriers in graphene. Okay. So the question is, where does this come from? So one way to look at is what is exactly tunneling in my uh, device structure. Okay, so I have two materials, graphene and a metal. So the question is where are the electrons in these systems? What are the electrons that are tunneling? So if you look at graphene, so this is how the uh, in case space, this is how graphene looks like. So for a particular density, if I'm sitting at a particular density, you can imagine the Fermi surface to be like a circle like this at six different points. I just have a circle, that's my Fermi surface. My electrons that contribute to tunneling reside there. So if you now look at from the top, so I have this is my Brillouin zone. And these red circles are where the graphenes are in the graphene layer. Now, if I look at the metal, then you should imagine that, okay, I have this kind of a circle which is sitting like this and the metal Fermi surface is a 3D Fermi surface, so it's a sphere. Uh, imagine it to be a sphere for now. Uh, you can have complicated Fermi surface, but for a metal like silver, it's pretty much like a sphere. And what happens is, because this Brillouin zone is actually quite big, this uh, metal Fermi surface is actually inside the Brillouin zone. So you do not really have any electron state where the momentum for the electron in the metal is same as the momentum for the electron in the graphene. So you have like disjoint Fermi surfaces. So if you consider tunneling with momentum conservation, so that's somewhat uh, indicated here, the current. So this term tells you that you should have in-plane momentum conservation for tunneling to happen. And if you have the density of states and the availability of states, just like the way you calculate uh, the current. And here we do not have any momentum conserved tunneling possible because the top layer and the bottom layer, they do not have any states where momentum is conserved. Okay, so that is the reason for the suppression of the current at low biases. So what happens at high biases? Why do I have a current which starts to come in at high biases? And the answer lies in the fact that you can have phonons or inelastic scattering processes which aids tunneling. Now the question is why, when do I have phonons playing an important role? That is when you have a large number of phonons available to kind of cause these kind of inelastic scattering. That happens when you have a flat band in the density of uh, phonon state. So here you have a flat band which has a large density of phonons. So at this particular energy which is like close to like 30, 40 uh, MeV is when I'll start seeing a large increase in the current. And that's exactly what is seen in our IV characteristics. When you're close to like 30, 40 milli electron volt, you start to see this increase in the current. So 
Another signature that we see are that you have these kind of small uh, features over here. If you look at a DIDV, uh, sorry, the second derivative, then you can see that they show up as uh, nice jumps here. And uh, this is for graphite and this is for graphene. Uh, and these are the exact phonon uh, states that contribute to tunneling. And they don't depend on gate voltage. So if I plot this as a function of gate voltage, you can see that they appear as nice lines, indicating that these are the phonon modes which contribute the most to tunneling. So I talked about defects. Where, what happened to the defects in this kind of a system? So we do see that in addition to these suppressed tunneling, sometimes there are these nice small uh, jumps that you have along with it. And the interesting thing is that because it's graphene now and it has got a finite density of states, it doesn't completely screen the field that you apply. So this is related to the, uh, uh, the quantum capacitance of graphene that it kind of does not screen it fully. So the gate uh, field can actually penetrate. So you can ma manipulate the defect states now with a gate electric field. So if I apply a gate voltage, you see that these peaks starts to move around. So they kind of collapse here and then again they start to move around. And it's illustrative to plot this as a color plot and if I do that, this is what you see. You have this dark band over here, which is a suppressed tunneling, no tunneling happening at those gate voltages. So the one that I showed you is like a line cut over here. So this is the bucket like feature that appears as a blue band. And on top of that, you have these patterns which cross in roughly like a diamond shape. Uh, also seen in another device here where you can see these nice diamond like uh, structures. So defects do uh, come into play and they actually uh, give you a nice Coulomb diamond plot. Uh, because we can apply a gate voltage in this. So the two main conclusions are that we have phonon assisted tunneling uh, in graphene and metal uh, structures and Coulomb diamonds are seen which are possibly due to intrinsic defect states uh, in the boron nitride devices. So the work uh, can be found in these two papers. Thank you. I didn't understand why as you increase the voltage why phonon certainly assist it. Uh... Uh, so it can happen even without, I mean, phonons can possibly be available all the time. But uh, if you look at the uh, phonon dispersion, then you, ha you do have phonons on almost all the energy scales, but uh, they possibly contribute to little bit of tunneling. So that is why whenever I said that there is suppressed tunneling, it's not exactly zero. So I do have some tunneling probably happening, but at that uh, energy scale, you have a large number of phonons which contribute to tunneling. So that's why you see a larger increase in current. You want me to just go back and just show? Yeah, so uh, if I look at the this dispersion, we have signatures of this one and then uh, over here and then some one, one set of phonons over here. But here it is kind of crowded. So we have a peak which is like kind of skewed out. It's not very sharp. So, but yeah, we see like four particular uh, phonons contributing to the noise. Uh, you mean like in which directions? Uh, so the thing is, uh, we do have Z modes which couple more. So those, those are the ones which are very strong. Uh, so I don't know if there is a dependence on the pi electrons as well, like in that direction. There have been theoretical works which predict that the Z modes would couple better. And we say, see that the main, the bigger two peaks are coming in from the Z modes. 